Hello and welcome to another Mr. Beats Bite video. And this video is a little bit different insofar as I'm recording the uh, intro right at the end of the repair process. Uh, I recorded nearly three hours worth of footage for this and uh, when I realised this in editing I decided to split it into two videos, hence why I have to do the intro right at the end. <laughs> um, in the video that follows, I do mention issues I had with the RF out insofar as I had to put the TV onto PAL BG. Now, this is a C30UB, so UK markets, but it appears to have a C30E European market uh, RF out module. Um, so I will need to change that. Um, I haven't done it yet. But uh, for it to be correct for the UK market, it needs to have the um, the correct uh, RF out module. Um, so yeah, it was just an added um, bit of fun, uh, especially as I couldn't actually use the video out, as you'll find out in the, the video that follows. Um, so. Yeah, it ended up being quite a heavily edited video, so apologies if it is a little bit disjointed. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just so frustrating because it was my own kit that was causing majority of the problems, not this machine. The, the actual repair went fairly well in the end. Um, but uh, I suppose that's the price you pay with old kits, and I do use the kit an awful lot, so it's wearing out. But uh, everything is back working now, so um, future videos should be a bit smoother in that respect. But anyway, let's crack on. Okay, so let's crack on taking this apart. So, undo that first, slacken this off. Um, take off the front cover. First of all, as well. Now I'm debating because of the state of this machine um, whether I'm even going to bother ever putting it back together. Um, I'll probably just leave it as a scrap, a source of um, parts. I'll scrap the machine. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just got a little bit too much wrong with it, really. Um, and I don't think it'll ever be reliable in itself. Uh, I think the parts will be useful uh, to get other machines going. But the case is also so shabby. Um, And uh, it's just lots of little things that just basically add up to it making sense. And of course, obviously, the problems with the um, capstan. And I don't, as such, have the parts to resolve that. I mean, this door as well. Uh, let's put this back down. The door's broken as well, and you can see. A printer's just linked, just leaked ink everywhere, linked ink <laughs> everywhere. Um, and um, yeah, it's, it's just lots of little things that add up to this machine really not being that wonderful. You see here the, um, it's probably how the door got broken actually, is it hasn't got the cable tied to hold the, um, the button assembly. So as a result, um, the door would have been striking the cabling and possibly somebody forced it, trying to get the door to close and broke the plastic. Not the first time I've seen that. Um, on the other machine, the IR unit's missing. I have got that, um, but uh, Yeah, I'll, I'll see. Whichever one I come to first will be the one I... Uh... Ah, looks like the display might have gone a bit gassy as well. Not seen that before on a VFD. Not on a Sony anyway.
Okay, so that's all the cables um, from the side and top of the deck free. Um, you'll notice that I have actually unplugged all the real table ones as well, even though I'm going to recycle the real table from the old deck in the um, in the other C30. Um, so I just have to do under the deck, which is, I think, as simple as just, I don't want the deck to fall out. I'm plugging the connector for the video heads. So that's a bit more out of the way. It's quite good because I've got a good collection of boards now. Um, not that I'm terribly sure I'll need them, but anyway. There we go. <clears throat> so there is a complete deck out of a C30, and it's not that bad. Um, I mean, I know I said a similar thing for the the uh, the other, the black C30, which had a lot less on it. But even with the real tables and everything, it's not too bad. Um, I mean, like I say, obviously I'm going to be helped because... Basically, all of these connectors are the ones I need, and these already connected um, with the old real table, so it's only those, <laughs> it's not many. So, uh, yeah, so what I'll do now is um, I'll do this off camera. Um, I'm going to give this a good clean. It doesn't look too bad. The drum's fairly shiny, but it's, it doesn't look too bad. But I have got I've got other drums, I've got other heads, so um, you know, if worst comes to worst, we can put uh, replacement heads on. It is very dirty, right? So I'll get and do that now. Another top tip while I think about it: um, if you need to get the clock uh, assembly out whole, um, you can actually do it really, really quickly by undoing these two screws and just lifting. The whole assembly up. Um, only reason I thought of that is I need to get this out, the, the IR, and um, you can't you can't actually even if you undo the screw or you undo the screw for it, you can't slide it out until you remove the clock. So um, yeah. <laughs> so there we have it all taken apart. There's the whole chassis there. Um, and then the boards, obviously, I've, um, yeah, there's one missing, that's the servo one, because I need to just um, uh, put the transistor back in that. So it, it's at least complete. I think that that's where the fault is. Could be on the um, signal board as well, but yeah. And power supply as well. So that's all done. Taking the feet off. So they're always very useful to have. They're the right feet for Sony's, so um, always criti particularly critical on the um, HF100. And I suppose the 950 as well, because that's, that's got the under, underneath ventilation. So uh, yeah, I've also got this bit as well, which I'll keep. Those I won't keep. And uh, yeah, so let's crack on. Okay, so I've got the deck ready to go, um, and I have given it a clean, not that you really know it, but it is clean. Um, there's some rust on it as well, but I'm not going to worry too much about that, uh, not at this stage anyway. Um, probably before it's finally good to go, I will just treat this rust before I put the, um, the front loading system on. So the first thing I need to do is carefully tip this over and remove the um, the old reel tables. So, because we're using the ones from the other machine, as they look in very good condition, actually. And I half expect the plastics underneath to break <laughs> doing this. 
go down here. I was going to suggest this one in the corner is the one that usually breaks, but to be honest, any of them are, are liable to just snap uh, off the metal chassis as it goes, well, the metal, metal pressing. So there we go. So reducing the wire count as well, which is always nice. Um, actually, this doesn't look too bad either. There is possibly some more excessive wear. And it's dustier as well, so these probably won't be as reliable, but uh, yeah, it's all good. Um, so let's just try and drop this in, see what happens. Make sure that no wires get trapped. I'll lift this up. Board's undone underneath, so it's all good. And back tension on. And how does that go? I think that rests. There's two little metal um, portions that come out here and here, which you probably can't see on the camera. Uh, because I didn't plan that very well. <laughs> um, but it looks like the deck rests on those. Um, yes, it does. So I'm going to put the screw in the front. Um, it should be a black screw. If it isn't, that's what's going in. I need to line this up again, I've moved it. Uh, although it shouldn't make any difference because those little tabs actually help line up the deck. Yeah, that's it. Properly, so it sits correctly. Is that going to go in? Probably not. Right, that's in. Just needed to be held in place to do that. Super. Well, I'm just going to put one more screw in, just so the deck doesn't flap about too much. I'm going to lift the whole machine up, get this side. Okay, so. Put that red connector in there, might as well. Very more difficult than it should be. Let's check that is actually all okay. I bent it or anything, that's fine. It just wasn't aiming very well. So let's get a cloth to catch those couple of drips. I hope I did it a little bit. So that's the tape in one. Down there. And this is the record tab sensing switch. Uh, actually looking pretty good. Let's put a bit too much on the one. Okay, lovely. Uh, everything else about this is good. Motor feels good, excellent. So, Yeah, so in case you're wondering why, why I said about the motor being good, um, the, some of these can have problems with the, uh, 
the spool or wheel drive motor, uh, the bearing in the middle um, can start to wear and it causes the um, moving section of the motor to drag uh, on the coils and or be very noisy um, or jam, um, especially in play. You get um, issues where playback, this spool will sort of stick. It's not the spool itself, it's actually the motor um, just not being able to develop enough torque to get past um, the wear on the bearing. Um, you can use very thin washers just to build it up a little bit, but I've never really found that has worked terribly well. Um, you know, it usually ends up, I have to wait until I get a, a scrap machine. Uh, that has a good has a good um, real table assembly. I mean, that's the best way to do it, to be honest. Um, because uh, I mean, over time they'll all wear, but I'd rather put something in that's uh, good. And then, if the person that's using it or me has problems with it in the future, then I can do the. Uh, do the work around just to keep it going a bit longer, really. Um, yeah, so that's that's that, that's done. Um, I suppose we can plug that in. There's a bit of play on it. Um, yes, yeah, so that's all plugged in. I think I've had to strain that front board. We've got fun, fun, fun of all of this. And it all needs to go through the cable management as well. Uh, I believe that one goes through that one. There. Too sure where it goes, but we'll sort that as we go along. It's fine. Now I was tempted to remove this board, but although Sony are really, really good with um, having unique connectors for each board, they don't always have unique connectors across boards. So I don't want to unplug them and find that I'm plugging in the wrong connector onto the wrong board. Or the right connect onto the wrong board. So uh, just got to be a bit, bit mindful of that. pin at the back the back left uh, I've got a red one there I don't know where that goes yet black one this um, screened grey cable that's there I believe that's the erase head on the ACE head um, then there's three prong again a shielded White back left, I believe that's correct. We've got these here, so um, these 
these will be things like end sensors, I believe, maybe. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, so that can't remember what that is. Possibly an end sensor. Uh, four pin there. It's four pin red. Four pin red goes front middle. That needs to go around there to the so on the left hand side there's some cable management so it goes in there. I'm just gonna put all of these cables in because quite a few had to come out that I didn't need to unplug, but were in front of the ones I did need to unplug and put out with the old deck. So there we go. Um so we've got some black ones there. We need a three. So it's three black goes towards the front left of the board. Like so. Um, and we've got two more reds there. We've got a white. So this white um, four pin plug uh, with the long lead, this long lead uh, actually enables you, I think it's for the capstan motor, um, enables you to pull it, pull it right out. Um, there's enough flexibility there to leave it connected and have it pulled out, uh, which is quite handy sometimes. Um, I was trying to get that in the cable management, but it's getting pretty full in there now. So that's great. Now one of these goes up to here. And I think it's it is that one, because that one's four. This one's a five pin, and this is a five pin plug. So that makes sense for the audio. The audio board at the back here. So we've got one left. Um yeah, you see that could be that. Oh, hang on a second. I might be duplicating stuff. Right, <laughs> I'm a Wally. Um, <laughs> if you look, um, these two connectors are identical, and these two connectors are identical. So what I've done is I've left the old cabling in from the old deck and I've got the new cabling from the new deck. So what I need to do is find out which is the actual from the new deck. So that's that's good. <laughs> so that's the red one, which is... That one. Yeah, there we go. And then Yeah, so I've basically plugged in the, the old ones. No, I didn't unplug the red one. Yeah, so they're on, basically that's all on the same loom. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see there that it's that, that's the deck end. And then you've got the two there, which I was spending ages trying to find out where they went, only to find that they actually went to nowhere. Duplicated. So, correct one on there, correct one on there. I was starting to really regret saying that Sony are really good with their connectors. <laughs> Thinking, how on earth have we got so many extra? Anyway, good. That's really good. And so I didn't have to take this out. Um, I will take the opportunity just to clean off the little bit of dust that's on the RF modulator. So I've modulator there. It's off the bottom of the board as well. Um, it is a pretty clean machine. Um, I still am pretty uh, happy with the, the 
the general condition of the machine itself. Um, obviously, there must have been something wrong with this. Um, and I'm guessing the fault with it was that the, um, the loading ring had snapped. In fact, I know it did. The, um, the little clip that the leading guide uh, on the loading ring um, that clips into uh, was broken. I've got it somewhere. So that's all on, all connected. Everything is happy. That's, um, I'm not sure where that goes. I can't remember. It's odd that it comes up and does that. Oh, of course, we know what that is. Fun loading system. So yes, that makes sense. Does that want to go through there? Yes, it does. So it's fairly tidy. It's it's never going to win any awards, I don't think, but it's, it's tidy. There, that's right. Super, okay. So, um, okay, so let's check the loading motor next. Do that, undo. Oh, gosh, that's tight. Now there was a little bit of a thing that the solenoid seemed a little bit lazy. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I have given it a clean. And uh, lubricated it a bit, so maybe that'll be enough, but I'm sort of, yeah. <laughs> Not holding my breath on that. So let's flip this spring off. So. Well, it seems to move fine, so that's good. Then we need to get our clippers. And snip. Cable tie at the back, which I should have done really when, I, when it, the whole thing was off, but anyway. Let's give it a bit more slack. And the loading gear. is snapped. So yeah, <laughs> how I used to get these undone was I'd spray apart the two plastic bits um, with my nails, and hence why I do tend to have longer nails because it's useful. And uh, as I spray them apart, push down with my nails. The only problem with doing that is you end up with the bits of plastic pushing right up into your, under your nails, which is not nice. So I've found that the width of this screwdriver um, I can tell you what that is. A screwdriver shaft, which is about what, 2.5 mil. Um, if you press that down on the top and just give it a bit more pressure, it pushes the lugs far enough apart to then push this through. And using just a, I mean, I'm using a spudger, but um, just something flat just to help it through once it starts moving. Take this away because obviously you don't want to break the plastic lugs, but that's it. And that pulls off. So you can see that probably not. There is a crack. Yeah, it's cracked at the bottom, but it's just not through. It's just started to fail, so I, I'll change that. Okay, so just putting the new gear on, uh, use some um, Gorilla Gel Glue, not sponsored or anything, it's just what was available. <laughs> um, so I've just put a coating of that round the shaft, and then I push this on, turning it as I go. That's it. And that is actually already set. Uh, it's amazing, really. Uh, so, yeah, I'll leave it um, set some more. As you can see, I push it sort of up to the end 
of the where the um where the other gear goes so a bit pokes out the bottom because obviously there's the um relative amount of the the sort of washer part of it then if you like the uh, captive part which of course i don't have um but it's fine we've talked about it before as well that um tend to find it it's fine you just have to make sure this doesn't slip off when you reassemble it so uh, yeah so we'll let that dry and uh We'll uh, carry on from there. So I hadn't actually thought about this before, but um, just cleaning this up, you can still see there's some in there. It's black in here. And I noticed with the gear I took off, which I have up here actually, I actually replaced it. Um, this is, you know, black coming off um, on my hand, on my finger. And I think, I'm pretty confident that it's the same plastic as these are made from, which are the, like the carbon um, dosed plastic. Uh, could be wrong. It could just be that it's, it's just coated in rubbish, but it just seems to be like the whole gear is just like disintegrating. I know I pressed, I pressed a blade of screwdriver to try and free it, but um, so obviously I've damaged it a bit there. But all of the all of the teeth are just not not good. So yeah, I wonder if that's going to start becoming a problem if they don't crack. They'll just slowly lose teeth um, as the, the plastic sort of is not that strong. So I started putting this all together and then realized I hadn't actually pressed record <laughs> as you do, but uh, not to worry because um, obviously I've done this in quite a few videos now and um, you pretty much know the drill. Uh, just looking for the right screws. So the screws for the top of the um, loading motor they have a, a, a flange around them and they're self-tappers. So all good. Some and a little bit of plastic goes uh, behind the little rod that comes up through the um, solenoid there. So that's magic. Super. So I have two front loading systems, which both look good, which is nice. I'm going to put the um, original one for this deck on. Um, they do tend to have quite bad grease on them. And really, I would like to strip this down, move all the, all the old grease, put some new silicon grease on, and um, thick grease rather than the, the thin stuff, because well, the thin stuff won't, won't do much for the greasing. It'll help with the protection to a degree of the um, plastics, it does creep. You have to be aware of that, uh, that it will sort of uh, start to get in the way. Um, I use, as one of my silicon lubricants, I use the WD-40 um, high performance silicon uh, lubricants. I may well, if I think to do it, <laughs> put a link to this for um, Amazon. Uh, it's not that expensive. I mean, I bought this from Aldi, actually. Uh, Aldi do go through stages of having it available. So just for now, just to stop any potential issues, I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. So, lovely. So, get 
front loading system and just needs to locate in the deck. There's no pegs or anything because it's held by multiple screws. So not like those VHS decks where you sort of lock the front in and then put the screws in here. Um, too much grease on there. I don't actually remember putting grease there, but anyway, <laughs> don't want grease there. Um, let's put these screws in first. Tension it up, don't tighten that screw too much because you don't want to crack the plastic. Um, and then So before I put the fifth screw in, let's pull out the magic tab. So the magic tab, give it a clean because it's absolutely filthy with dust. Then slide out the top one, slide out the bottom one. It's a little bit more tricky. Go. I'll give those a clean, but let's just clean in here. Another screw. I've got a whole collection of screws off screen because uh, I stripped down the other machine and totally stripped it down to nothing. Um, I have a good collection of these little Sony screws now. Um, I've actually stripped down in total in the last sort of 18 months or so, about three machines, three Sonys. Um, I have also stripped down the barn find machine um, that was featured in a previous video. So that's that's actually gone, well, I say I've stripped it down, I haven't. I've I, I, um, passed that on to somebody who needed a machine four parts. Um, that machine was good. It was actually uh, working pretty well in the end, uh, despite the fact that it was pretty, um, pretty ropey. Front button, uh, front panel buttons, they are actually all good, um, or seem to be, and we'll, and we'll test it. Um, Yes, so that's that. Then we have to put the remote sensor in. So that goes here. So utilizing our trick with the uh, clock, i.e. taking the whole clock module out in one go, I think we'll be able to do this. I might have to take this board off again, but hopefully not. Looking hopeful. Uh, the connector for that is here. Let's so connect it first and then put the screw in there. The original screw was screwed back in by the previous owner. screws back in. Super. So what I'm going to do is I'll just clean these up and then I think we're in a position where we can test it. I haven't done the caps in the power supply yet um, and I will do that but I'm not going to video that because um, I've done that a few times before now in videos and yeah. It's, yeah. You, you, so uh, put a new mains plug on and um, all back together, put the ball back on as well for the uh, 
the tape transport controls. So let's power it on. This will be the first time actually I've powered it on. Um, when I bought this, the listing did show it as working. Um, clock lit up and all the rest of it, but that's it. So uh, I suppose you better see what it does. That's encouraging. So let's try it. Just gonna try my blank tape. That's looking good. Fast forward, rewind, play. The solenoid is actually a lot better. That cleanup has made it so much, so much better. And loading is good as well. Let's try and unload. That's actually really good. Wow. <laughs> I'm actually quite surprised how good that is. Um, okay, so let's try an actual tape. So Kodak cassette. So you can obviously hear the additional load the tape makes. Um, get that. So I just cycle between clock counter. So that's good. So time to look for a picture. See what it's actually like. So let's get this power supply out. So I have uh, changed the caps on the power supply. Um, not all of them. Um, it's only the small ones really that need to be changed. So these two here, which are 22 microfarad, rated at 16 volts, as is this one. But I've actually put 25 volt ones in, I think. 25 or 35? 25. 25. Um, and um, also the 2200 microfarad um, capacitor here which is also rated at 25 volts, but again, I've gone up to 35. And then there's two, turn this over, those two small capacitors there next to the large 10,000 microfarad Elna cap. Um, they're both 47 microfarad rated at 16 volts. And again, I've gone up to 25 volts um, just for extra safety. Um, so, uh, I suppose the next thing, also giving it clean. <laughs> uh, so the next thing is to uh, put it back and uh, see if that's fixed the problem. If not, we'll have to actually do some proper fault finding. So one thing I nearly forgot was to remove all the glue from the uh, Hall Effect sensor. So let's do that now. Um, I'm going to do it off camera because I have shown this before on another video. So um, yeah, let's crack on and do that now. All cleaned up. Um, you can see some remnants of glue there, but that's fine. The actual glue between the legs um, is gone, or pretty much so. Possibly it's a little bit just at the end there, um, where it's actually where the leads are going into the Hall Effect sensor itself. So we'll just give that another little bit of a clean, but uh, pretty much they are good to go. Um, Done a couple of other things as well off camera. So I've put the um, the wire links on the um, output connectors uh, for extra strength, and also cleaned the connectors uh, plus the RF. Uh, a bit more of a dust out as well, and uh, yeah, just generally a bit of housekeeping. Just made it nice. So uh, the next thing I think that would be nice to do 
is actually just test these capacitors from the power supply to see how bad they were. Okay, so the first one is a 22 microfarad, 16 volt. Oh, <laughs> wow, that is bad. 22 microfarad, 16 volts. Oh, doesn't even recognize it. Let's try again. Wow. Let's just try this in case it's not. Yeah, that's in. Oh, wow. <laughs> Not good. So next, 22 microfarad, 16 volts. Yeah, that's not so bad, but uh, yeah, it's on the way out. So 47 microfarad, 16 volts. Yeah, that's not happy either, really, is it? I mean, it's not, it's not bad. It's fine, but yeah, it's probably on the way out. Forty-seven microfarad, sixteen volts. Second one. Yeah, that's fine. That one's actually fine. Now for the. 2200 microfarad, uh, 25 volt, no, 16 volt. So, I reckon this will be all right. Yeah, that's fine. Now to test it. So, first time powering on. That's looking good. No blown fuses so far. <laughs> And power on. Try the dud tape first. The, um, the blank, blank cassettes. So it does still sound as if we've got a servo issue. Okay, so I've, I've got a tape in there now, and uh, I have no uh, video outputs from the video out um, connectors. So, uh, let's see what we have on our F outs. We should still be tuned in. So, we do still have issues. I don't have the same herringbone, but I do have issues with the video board, it looks like. Um, I mean, I just think this machine has been well and truly fiddled with, but we'll see. Um, it just seems really odd that I've got so many faults with this machine. So, hmm, interesting. So all sorted. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, embarrassingly, the issue with the RF out was down to me not selecting BG rather than I for the RF input uh, for the tuning on the TV. I keep forgetting that it does um, default to I, uh, but, and of course that causes all sorts of problems with RF. Um, the video out, that works fine. Um, again, I had a problem with my switch box. Uh, it's funny how these things always come uh, at once. <laughs> So uh, yeah, so I need to fix that, but I have I have got it going. Um, 
I found that by putting the um, switch, the input output switch sort of halfway, it does work. So it's fine. Um, but how annoying. Uh, let's just give it some sound. So the head speed issue, um, that was down to um, the DFS, the drum free spin setting, ever slightly tweaked. Um, so I just readjusted that. Um, it will need a, a full alignment. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a head, head switch line at the bottom there. See it's sort of flickering at the bottom of the screen. So we'll get rid of that. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, it's actually now absolutely fantastic. And um, yeah, it's debatable whether those capacitors in the power supply were causing as many problems as uh, I thought, just because I just missed, I just missed that um, tuning issue on the, um, on the RF outside of it, uh, that would have really helped if I'd remembered that. Just shows you, just be careful. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it just, you know, I sat down and thought about it and realized that I had actually sort of fixed the machine. There was nothing, nowhere else to go with it. I'd, I'd done everything. Um, and uh, yeah, just really odd. So, um, I suppose the next thing is to get this back together. So, there we have it. It is working. Um, I do still need to just finish off the alignment, but it is pretty good. Um, Q and review weren't working either. So I've just manually adjusted that by eye for now, just to, just to make sure everything is fine. Still isn't bad. I mean, it's two head, so what do you expect? Uh, tracking, right the way down the left-hand side. A little bit of noise, then that comes out straight away. Top end. Yeah, so my teddy just getting a little bit upset, but top end is pretty good. In fact, very, very good. Uh, very pleased with that. So, we're all good to go. Like I say, it just needs minor alignment just to finish it off. Which I don't do it from the top. Uh, just remove this board, four screws, and get to the, um, it's the head switching mainly I'm concerned about. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Um, you might have noticed I don't have the Sony TV anymore. I've, I've moved all my rubbish into where it was. Uh, that's gone into storage, actually. Um, and that's because I have this, which is a Sony LND 9050. It's a little LCD um, monitor type, monitoring type screen. Um, Needs a few things done to it, power supply put onto it. I've got a connector, um, it's 12 volts. Um, needs a bit of a repair job as well on the cabinets. So uh, I will be featuring that in another video at some point. We've got a few things to go through first before we get to that. Um, we've got also got the PCM F1 um, for the part four of um, SLF1. TTF1 and uh, now the PCM F1. So all that to come. But uh, as always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Really means a lot to me. Thank you so much. And uh, see you in another video.